Okay, so we've entered all that. Now we've got these two down here, and these are gonna be those, those types of things that now I'm gonna say these are on the bank statement, and the, I don't see them on our books. I don't see those over here on our books because I didn't enter these withdrawals. Maybe I took a cash withdrawal from the bank and maybe I had the bank service charges that aren't included. Remember that if you had bank feeds, these probably would flow through. You would have seen them and you would have added them as they go. But if you don't have bank feeds, then you'd have to add these. In other words, it's on the bank statement. It's not on our books. So we're gonna have to add them to our books unless the bank is wrong. I don't think the bank is wrong. So we're gonna have to fix our books. So I'm gonna go back on over and say, okay, let's let's save this for later save it for later and then it's like putting the gum on the bed post so you can chew it some more in the morning and then we're gonna go down to and add these to the check register so we're gonna go into the accounting again and then uh, ch uh chart of accounts if you're in the other view the business view we would go into the bookkeeping and the chart of accounts and i'm going to enter these directly into the check register for cash because i think that's the easiest thing to do so when the chart of accounts close in the hand buggy and i'm just going to go into the register here and add these two items okay so i'm just going to add these as like expense forms so i'm just going to hit the drop down and say okay i got to add these in there because they charge me for these and there's nothing i can do about it so i'm going to put them in there as of 0228 uh two three and let's say this first one, what do we have? We've got a withdrawal. So we took cash out of the business or the owner did. Now there's some issues with this. I could just put a like owner, you might say, uh, owner withdrawal maybe. And then I'm gonna add that as a vendor, even though it's not really a vendor, it's an owner, but our only two options are vendor or owner. So I'm gonna say that. And then uh, another customer, let's put owner period, save it. And then I'm going to say that the memo is going to be a draw, cash draw. The payment is I'm going to put for 150. Now there's a couple issues with the, with the draws because uh, you, you might say if you drew the money out, we would like to be able to say from the bookkeeping standpoint that anytime you take out cash, that you took it out for personal use, uh, in which case it would just be a draw for personal use but sometimes people take cash out and they use it for the business and so that if they took cash out and they bought stuff with it then that gets a little bit tricky because we don't have the audit trail and remember and so we're gonna have to want to have receipts and stuff so for example if you if you took money out and then you paid someone in cash or for something in cash for the business then i'm we on the bookkeeping side have to figure out and that might be you doing your own bookkeeping or you might be doing bookkeeping for someone else are going to have to determine without any kind of audit trail once that hits the bank where the cash went and allocate it to the proper category so from a bookkeeping standpoint even if you're doing your own bookkeeping but particularly if you're doing bookkeeping for someone else we would like to have a method of not doing that right if you, if you have a legitimate expense, especially with the in United States having an, an income tax kind of system, expenses are usually good for taxes, they're deductions. So we would like to have well-documented expenses so that we can say, hey, look, those were legitimate you know, deductions. If you're paying with cash, then we're gonna have to add things possibly like receipts or things like that so that we have the paper trail rather than just having the, the thing coming electronically out of your checking account or credit card account or having a physical check that we can kind of use as support for the actual payment. So so let's see what the difference is between the two methods. Now, uh, in the first month, we're gonna assume that they that they actually spent it on something for for an expense, meaning the check the cash account's gonna go down, the other side is gonna be an expense, and I'll just put it into like miscellaneous expense over here. And so that's going to have an impact on the financial statements. If it was for personal use, on the other hand, then what it should happen is it should go to the equity account, not having an impact on the income statement. And, and that's the key difference because it's, it's going to the personal, to the owner. It's drawing out like the equity, which represents the owner's claim to the, to the assets. So that's the difference. We'll show the difference between the two. We'll start off making it go to an income account. By the way, you have a similar issue 
like if the if the company is using their business account for personal purchases like they 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 put on the business account checking account a trip to disneyland or something well now you have an issue we would have liked it would be easier if they took the money out put it into their personal checking account and then spent it on disneyland but if we see money that's going to something that's for personal use we could just assign that when we record it uh, as a as a as a draw as opposed to an expense when it when they pay disneyland we're not going to say it's disneyland expense or trip expense or anything like that instead we're going to say uh they pay disneyland and we'll record it as a draw on the other side so it doesn't hit the income statement same kind of thing all right so we're going to go over here and say let's say this goes into miscellaneous miscellaneous so they've got other miscellaneous it's going to show up on the bottom of the income statement so i'm going to say okay let's do that and since save it so we've done something to the income statement now we've made a change so if i go to the balance sheet we've adjusted our cash account to more align with what is on the checking account because they had a transaction that we believe is correct so if i go into there we had all this stuff happened on actually i'm on january I want to go to the Feb statement info. So if I go down here, we've got that 150. The other side should be on the income statement, the P and the L, the profit and the loss, and run it to refresh it. It's down here. They put it into to the other category, which I might change, but because I don't, I mean, I wouldn't put miscellaneous into other generally just because we haven't categorized it doesn't mean it's not a normal business expense to me, but it's down there. We might change that. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing for the 15 bank charges. So the, the, the bank charged us money, which we saw in the bank statement. So I'm going to say, okay, the bank. I won't even put a payee. I'm just going to say bank charge. And then it's $15. And then it should go into something like service charge, service charge. There's one. So they got under services, bank fees and service charges all right that's let's that's, use that account so we're using the same kind of concept if quickbooks has an account that seems applicable we'll use that one if i don't like the name or the fact that it's a sub account then I'll, maybe i'll use it and it'll go in there and adjust the name and make it a non-sub account so i'm going to save it and close it and then once again if i go up and run the balance sheet we've actually entered a transaction to the checking account of course not in january though not in jan I did make it in January. I messed up. Hold on. I need to bring that back to Jan to January. So let me do that again. Let's do that again. Let's change the dates here. I'm going to change the dates because this I'm working in January. What are you thinking? What are you thinking, man? At the end of January. Because this is the January bank statement. January 31st. So I'm going to change that. Sorry about that. Some someone's uh, trying to use has been made inactive check fields okay i went into the form and then adjust it and it let me do it i'm going to do it to this one here so this time i'm going to edit it this way so it doesn't give me some weird thing and i'm just going to check the date from 01 31 23 and let's do it that way save it and close it Okay, so the point is I put them in there as of the end of January because we're doing the January bank rec. So if I go back on over to the balance sheet, run it one more time, and I should be able to go into this one, this one here, and then the end of the Jan, we've got the two items are properly input. Okay, that makes sense. I was just, something wasn't jiving, and I like to jive. So let's go back to the one to the right, run it again. And then we've got the miscellaneous in January now, and that uh, makes sense. And the other one uh, went into the bank service charge, which is up here in January. Okay, okay, doke. Let's go back to the first tab then, open up the bank rec once again, uh, and, and we're gonna go down to the bookkeeping or the accounting to do that. And we're gonna go into reconcile Close up the boogie, resume reconciling. We'll zoom wrecking, wrecking stuff, wrecking the style, reconcile. So then we've got the, those two that we added right here, the 15 and the 150, boom, bam, boom, bam. 